Welcome to the first episode of Tech Builder. Every week, I'll be posting new and random projects. I'm Angelo, and I'm your host. This week, we're building a mini FM spy bug. It's a tiny FM transmitter that can be powered with a 9 volt battery. Not only is this project fun to play with, it's also educational. Building your own transmitter is a great way to learn electronics. Don't worry, it's easy to make and I'll guide you through the process. Here's a short demo of my FM transmitter. You can watch the full demo at the end of the video. So I've done the demo by playing Kalimba with my FM transmitter placed beside my laptop. I walked around our house to see the range of my FM transmitter. Surprisingly, the FM transmitter worked marvelously despite the number of walls where my FM transmitter was placed. Even by going out, my FM radio was still able to get a clear signal from my FM transmitter. Okay, let's start. Head over to your local Radio Shack store to buy some parts. You'll also need a soldering iron. If you want to fabricate a custom PCB for this project, there's a link to the downloadable file below this video. It's compressed on a zip file, so you'll have to extract it on your desktop. The folder includes a schematic diagram. You'll also find the raw Fritzing PCB file. Together with it, you'll also find the printable PDF with a fixed layout size. I guess some of you are familiar with the toner transfer method. Well, today we're going to use something different, and it's called the photopositive PCB. It's like a camera film, but it's a PCB. The photopositive method is done by exposing the PCB with light. I use a timer to keep track of time. That prevents me from having overexposed PCBs. It's now time to develop the PCB on a mixture of sodium hydroxide. The lines will show up after a period of time. Now, drain the container, then fill it with ferric chloride. Ferric chloride is used to etch copper. This could take 30 minutes. Agitating the tray should speed up the process. Just wait and wait and wait until you're done. Now pour acetone all over the board and clean the ink with a swab. Now use your mini drill to drill holes for the components. You can now solder the parts. You can start off by soldering the resistors, then the trimmer capacitor, then the transistors, then the capacitors. Now solder the electric mic. It has a polarity, so be careful. Next, we'll form the coil. Strip a gauge 18 solid wire and wind 7 to 8 turns on a quarter inch bolt. Now solder it together with the antenna. The antenna can be a hookup wire. Only use a maximum length of 8 inches. Do this at your own risk. You will be recycling a battery clip from an old 9 volt battery. The flat surface of the recycled battery clip is perfect for a project. It makes a project more compact. Solder some wires on the clip, then add some tape to prevent it from shorting. Now solder it to your transmitter. Apply a generous amount of hot glue to keep the 9 volt clip and the FM transmitter intact. It wouldn't hurt to add more, so I added more. Now that we're done building the FM transmitter, we can now tune it. The FM transmitter can cover all the radio channels within the FM range. There are three effective ways of tuning your FM transmitter. One is by using an FM radio, and the second one is by using multitester with a frequency metering function. And the last one is by using an oscilloscope. Now clip your FM transmitter to your 9 volt battery. Tightly hold the 9 volt battery, then turn the trimmer capacitor with a screwdriver. Do this until you get a very loud feedback from your FM radio. Okay, so let's test the FM transmitter and let's see what we can get out of it across the room. We're going to play Mr. Scruff Ninja Tuna.
for sure there is more side of our house and I can say that the uh, FM transmitter is working great. So we came all the way over there going to here. So that's very far considering that the house is full of walls. So that's how you make an FM transmitter. Thanks for watching.